The Doctor recently got back one of their former faces, just in time for Doctor Who's 60th anniversary year. But this is far from the only time that a familiar face from Doctor Who's past has reappeared in another episode. Today we're turning our attention to the Whitaker slash Chibnall era, an era which began by wiping the slate clean, with no returning monsters or characters. But behind the scenes, a few familiar faces managed to crop up in one form or another. With that in mind, here's every time Doctor Who reused actors in the Chibnall era. Number 1. Bradley Walsh as Elijah Spellman slash Graham O'Brien So before we get going properly, we do of course have one of the era's regulars who'd appeared in the Hooniverse before. Bradley Walsh is best known for portraying Graham O'Brien across series 11 and 12, but this wasn't his first contribution to the world of Doctor Who. Back in 2008, he'd appeared in the Sarah Jane Adventures series 2 story, The Day of the Clown, as the nebulous villain of the piece, Elijah Spellman, slash Odd Bob the Clown, slash The Pied Piper. Number 2. Vanette Robinson as Abby Lerner, slash Rosa Parks. Making a return to Doctor Who in the series 11 episode, Rosa, was the actor who played Rosa herself, Vanette Robinson. Eleven years earlier, with a different hairstyle, accents and outfits, Robinson had played Abby Lerner, one of the crew members on the SS Pantalion in the series 3 episode, 42. Chris Chibnall's first contribution to the main show. Number 3. Morgan Deer as Hawk slash Arthur. Also in Rosa, cast your minds back towards the end of the episode, when Ryan tries to persuade an elderly couple to take the bus rather than walk. What you probably didn't realise is that the elderly man is an actor who's appeared in Doctor Who before, specifically over 30 years earlier in 1987's Delta and the Bannerman. In that story, actor Morgan Deer played the character of Hawk, one half of the American double act Hawk and Weismuller. Number 4. Ravin J. Ganatra as Neil slash Hakim Khan Ravin J. Ganatra is best known to Doctor Who fans as Yaz's dad Hakim, making his debut as that character in Arachnids in the UK, followed by further cameos in Demons of the Punjab and Spyfall Parts 1 and 2. But Ganatra had in fact appeared in the Hooniverse before, He's one of multiple Torchwood alumni to feature across the Whitaker era, having previously played jealous ex-husband Neil in the series 1 episode, Greeks Bearing Gifts. Number 5. Lena Dingra as Miss Chandrakala slash Nanny Umbreen. Ganatra isn't the only member of Yaz's family to have featured in the Hooniverse before. In Demons of the Punjab, we meet Yaz's nanny for the first time, played in her elderly form by Lena Dingra. Dingra was making a return to the show after exactly a decade, having portrayed house servant Miss Chandrakala in the series 4 episode, The Unicorn and the Wasp. Number 6. Shane Zaza as Atif slash Prem. Also in Demons of the Punjab, Umbreen's husband-to-be Prem was played by an actor who had appeared in the Hooniverse before. In Tardisode 12, the webcast prequel to Army of Ghosts, actor Shane Zaza had played Atif, a reporter trying to learn the truth about Torchwood. Number 7. Matthew Gravel as Plague Doctor slash Voice of the Kablam Men Matthew Gravel, the actor best known for his role as Joe Miller in Series 1 of Broadchurch, lent his voice to the Kablam Men in the Series 11 episode, Kablam. This followed an in-person appearance as a Plague Doctor in Torchwood Series 1 finale, End of Days. Number 8. Daniel Adegboyega as Guard slash Aaron. Yaz isn't the only 13th Doctor companion whose father has featured in the Hooniverse before. Daniel Adeboyega, who played Ryan's dad Aaron Sinclair in New Year's Day special Resolution, had previously played a guard in the Torchwood Miracle Day story, The Categories of Life. Number 9. Struan Roger as the voice of the face of Bo and the voice of the Kasavin. Fast forward to Jodie Whittaker's second season, and the menacing Kasavin were causing havoc for the TARDIS team. Eventually, with the help of Human Agent O, alias the Master, the Doctor is able to capture Kasavin and speak to it. This is the first time we hear the creatures speak, and if you listen carefully, you might just detect a familiar tone. That's because the voice of the Kasavin was also the voice of one of Doctor Who's most iconic alien creatures, the face of Bo. Sadly, actor Struan Roger wasn't reprising that role here, 
Although coincidentally, Captain Jack Harkness, who is said to be a much younger version of the face of Bo, would reappear just a few episodes later, after an absence of a decade. Incidentally, Strew and Roger also reappeared in the Capaldi era, making his only in-person appearance in Doctor Who as a Shilder's servant, Clayton. Number 10. Sasha Dewan as Waris Hussein slash The Master. The Master himself was played by an actor familiar to the world of Doctor Who. Seven years prior to Spyfall, actor Sasha Dewan had portrayed Doctor Who's first director, Waris Hussein, in the 50th anniversary docudrama An Adventure in Space and Time. Number 11, Mark Dexter as Cal's dad slash Charles Babbage. Also appearing in Spyfall, albeit in part two, was another RTD1 era alumnus. Mark Dexter originally appeared in memorable 10th Doctor two-parter, Science in the Library slash Forest of the Dead. For series 12, he reappeared in a different role, that of 19th century inventor Charles Babbage. Dexter once again appeared as himself with no prosthetics or mask, and although he did look a little bit older, after all 12 years had passed, overall he looked fairly similar to how he did in that original appearance. Number 12, Spencer Wilding as the Minotaur, Wooden King and Skaldak slash lead drag. The dregs were one of Doctor Who series 12's most imposing monsters, in part due to their massive build and size. To fit the bill, Doctor Who called on one of its most prolific creature actors, six foot six Spencer Wilding who had previously appeared as the Minotaur in The God Complex, the Wooden King in The Doctor, The Widow and The Wardrobe, and Ice Warrior Skaldak in Cold War, as well as playing Darth Vader in Star Wars. On this occasion, Wilding brought to life the lead Drek, making a return to Doctor Who after almost a decade away. Number 13, Robert Glenister as Major Salatine slash Thomas Edison. Here we have another actor from 80s Doctor Who who reappeared in the Whittaker era. In series 12 story Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror, Robert Glenister brought to life Nikola Tesla's rival Thomas Edison with great aplomb. But this wasn't his first appearance in the Hooniverse. 36 years earlier, in the fifth Doctor's acclaimed final story The Caves of Androzani, Glenister had played futuristic character Major Salatine, as well as his android duplicate. Incidentally, this makes Glenister the second actor to reappear as an inventor in series 12. Number 14, Anjali Mahindra as Rani Chandra slash the Queen Scythra. Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror is also the second series 12 episode to feature multiple returning actors. Although she'd never appeared in Doctor Who itself before, Queen Scythra actor Anjali Mahindra had previously played Rani Chandra across five seasons of spin-off show The Sarah Jane Adventures. Underneath all those alien prosthetics, she's barely recognisable, but nonetheless puts in just as memorable a performance. Number 15, Paul Casey as Various Monsters slash Harold Green and the Jadoon. Paul Casey is one of a number of prolific Doctor Who monster actors to reappear in the Whittaker era. His previous roles had ranged from Autons and Zygons to the Whispermen and the Ood. In Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror, he made an in-person appearance as Thomas Edison's employee, Harold Green, before returning to the role of Jadoon Captain in Fugitive of the Jadoon and the Timeless Children. Number 16, Michael Begley as Mulligan slash All Ears Allen. Also in Fugitive of the Jadoon, memorable character All Ears Allen was a face from the past. Actor Michael Begley had previously portrayed Mulligan, one of the pirates on board Captain Avery's ship in The Curse of the Black Spot. Number 17, Warren Brown as Sam Bishop slash Jake. Like Mahindra, Warren Brown had technically never featured in Doctor Who itself before prior to playing ex-cop Jake in Praxius, but he had also made a memorable contribution to one of Doctor Who's spin-off shows, albeit an audio rather than television spin-off. Brown played unit personnel Sam Bishop alongside Gemma Redgrave as Kate Stewart across the first six new series unit box sets for Big Finish. Although he never actually appeared visually, these being audio dramas, Brown became well known for a certain photograph which appeared on many Big Finish covers. In addition to the unit series, Brown has played Sam Bishop alongside Christopher Eccleston in the Ninth Doctor box set Old Friends, and alongside Michelle Ryan in both seasons of Lady Christina, among other big finish credits. Number 18, Ian Gelder as Mr. Decker 
slash The Remnants and a Zealot. Ian Gelder is another spin-off actor to make his Doctor Who debut in this era. Having previously played MI5 technician Mr Decker in Torchwood epic Children of Earth, Ian Gelder first lent his voice to The Remnants in The Ghost Monument, delivering that crucial first allusion to the timeless child, before making a full-on appearance in the following season as Zelin in Can You Hear Me? Number 19, Julie Graham as Ruby White slash Ravio. Sticking on the spin-off theme, Julie Graham's first contribution to the Hooniverse was as Sarah Jane Adventures villain Ruby White in the Series 4 story Goodbye Sarah Jane Smith. A decade later, she graduated to Doctor Who in a very different role, namely as human survivor Ravio in Series 12 finale Ascension of the Cybermen and the Timeless Children. Number 20, Nigel Richard Lambert as Hardin slash Priest Triangle. Nigel Richard Lambert made his Doctor Who debut as scientist Hardin in the 1980 story The Leisure Hive. Over 40 years later, he would return to the show, this time just lending his vocal cords, to provide the voice of the Priest Triangle, the interface to the Temple of Atropos in Flux. Number 21, Vincent Brimble as Tarpok slash Gerald. In perhaps the most surprising reappearance on this list, Medicine villager Gerald in Village of the Angels was brought to life by a monster actor from the 80s, specifically Vincent Brimble, who played Tarpok, one of the three Silurians in Warriors of the Deep. Number 22, Kevin McNally as Hugo Lang slash Professor Jericho. As Professor Jericho, also in Village of the Angels, Kevin McNally provided a foil to Jodie Whittaker's 13th Doctor, but this wasn't the first time he'd fulfilled this role. Fast forward from Warriors of the Deep to the end of Season 21, specifically the sixth Doctor's story, The Twin Dilemma, and you'll find a much younger McNally bring to life pilot Hugo Lang alongside Colin Baker and Nicola Bryant. Given how well known an actor McNally has become in the years since, this is arguably one of the most rewarding returns on this list. Number 23, Sanchia McCormack as Housing Officer slash Train Marshal Hallas. Finally, bringing us right up to date with the 13th Doctor's final story, The Power of the Doctor, we have an actor who's appeared in two memorable cameo roles. As Train Marshal Hallaz in The Power of the Doctor, Sanchi McCormack was brutally murdered by the Cybermasters. But 14 years earlier, she'd made her Doctor Who debut as a very different character. In the apocalyptic world of Series 4 story Turn Left, the noble family is left with nowhere to go when London is destroyed. Their only hope? A certain UK city delivered iconically by McCormack's housing officer, Leeds. And there we have it, every time Doctor Who reused actors in the Chibdall era. If there is anyone that I've missed, please do let me know down in the comments below. Also, be sure to let me know how many of these actors you already knew about. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more stuff like this in the future. But otherwise, until the next one, thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now.